Hello, welcome back to the L1 show. Today is March 5th. I was about to do the, the Star Wars theme, but that's May 5th. March the 5th be with But you. Wendell makes uh, that joke every time, no matter what month Yeah, every year I should have known. No, no, not every year. Every Just, month we do a recording on the 5th. Yeah. But... Anyway. It's an earwig that goes in your brain. Uh, and then you just get it stuck forever. Uh, you know, speaking of that, it's got nothing to do with anything, but I saw a Reddit post of someone who was showing off new pictures of cordyceps-like fungus from the Amazon. You see that? No, but I don't feel good about it. There is one that is literally exactly like the hypnotoad. <laughs> where, the, you know, the big eye stalks are funguses. <laughs> I wish I would have kept that picture. We could pop it up and show it. Oh. We need to get that and genetically modify it. could be a nonsense it. story. We could add that in. Animal? Well, I don't know I guess how to that's get back really to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was animals. Well, I mean, it was affecting uh, animals. Yeah. We need to distribute that on L1 products so that you can share links with your friends. Distribute the parasites? Fungus? Yeah. Yeah, well, so that you get infected, and then it's like, oh, I must share oh, links okay. with friends with everybody. Wow. That would really help our like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> And YouTube doesn't care because they have no ethics at all. Well, let's go move away from horrible, mind-warping parasites and talk about traditional parasites, which is the U.S. government. <laughs> and this headline, I can't help but beg the question, who's going to protect me from you, sir? I see that you're trying to protect me from someone else. But what about you? You do this. <laughs> the Engadget headline is, Biden executive order aims to stop Russia and China from buying Americans' personal data. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, so they've noticed that it turns out that, and we'll have a lot more stories about that later, but uh, it turns out that you can weaponize that in a lot of ways. I mean, it's been weaponized for like 10 years, but now, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry that is somewhere else could weaponize that. And they're saying, oh, how do we close that door? You know how the U.S. government knows that's such a problem? Because they're doing it. Again, the Spider-Man meme. Hit your bingo card. <laughs> and once again, the mirror relationship. Because what was it like two years ago? We heard about this in the opposite. Because uh, Tesla is not welcome in a lot of places in China. Biden administration is investigating security threats from Chinese vehicles. Basically, okay, so like this is a terrible headline. Like this doesn't... Everything is connected and always on. And whenever whenever everything is connected and always on, you can do a rug pull. But this doesn't have anything to do with vehicles. Think about Viasat. Viasat uh, was, there's some stuff going on between, you know, Russia and Ukraine. And Viasat was providing internet service there long before Elon Musk. And then all of a sudden, Viasat stopped working everywhere. Like, they just turned it off. It wasn't us that turned it off, I'll tell you that. But it was because everything is connected. Cars are always connected. What if a car just stops working? What if its control computer system just just gets erased? Well, now all of a sudden the gas pedal and the steering wheel don't work because they're not hardwired in, as in like mechanically wired in. It's electronic. Or what if you buy a BYD and someone who's observing it in Beijing notices that you go from Virginia to D.C. every day? <laughs> hmm. Maybe you have a job that they would like to look more in on. You don't even have to load the Grinder app on your car's <laughs> cell phone data. And uh, of With course, foreshadowing. going back to the China thing, one of the things they didn't like about it is that it's a surveillance vehicle that doesn't look like a surveillance vehicle and isn't operated as a surveillance vehicle. But when it's parked, it's looking everywhere. <laughs> Are you saying that the... Uh, Ford Fiesta is useless as a surveillance vehicle, but all those microphones that are built into a Tesla for being able to use a hands-free thing could be surreptitiously enabled at any time. All those old cars are looking better and better, aren't they? <laughs> and they're so expensive. Everything's so expensive. Yeah. Now's a bad time to buy cars. It's tax time. Mm. Don't buy a car. And uh, we have obviously seen some bad behavior from OpenAI. They've said some things. They've restructured their business in ways that probably don't agree with their original mission statement. And finally, someone at the top has woken up. The U.S. SEC probes whether OpenAI investors were misled, the Wall Street Journal reports. OpenAI, they originally open source. We're going to share everything for the good of humanity. They're not doing that. And more importantly, that whole board shakeup when Altman had his little tantrum, they do not like that. Because that seems like a coup by Microsoft. With a few extra steps. But the one thing they are doing is making money hand over fist. <laughs> so most investors aren't complaining. But there are a few, Elon Musk among them. 
We'll have more on that later. Line is going up and technology is moving forward at a maybe dangerously rapid pace. And usually the people at the top are like, well, let's let that happen. I mean, this is moving faster than the invention of electricity. I should tell you something. Well, here's a, let's take a little blast from the past. Do you guys remember Project Maven? I think it was like a year or two ago. <laughs> we reported on that. Yeah, we reported on the people at Google looking into what was going on at Google and saying to themselves, are we the baddies? <laughs> <laughs> and they made a lot of noise and Google was forced to walk away from it. But that did not end the project. Uh, the tech spot headline is the U.S. Department of Defense is using machine learning algorithms to find airstrike targets. That, on the surface, doesn't really sound like a huge problem. The problem comes when they have as much or less oversight than the machine learning algorithms that issue speeding tickets for things that are innocuous and wrong. And no one looks at it and like, well, a computer says we should blow this up. I guess it's good. Yeah, when you're scratching your head instead of call, you know, like doing something bad, in this case, you get Reaper droned <laughs> rather than a $700 fine, which is... Call back to last week. This guy's deck was so poorly constructed, it was destroyed from space. <laughs> it was important. It's like, oh, it, his deck looked just like a weapons installation. Our bad. Now, the government insists that a human being always makes that final decision. <laughs> but what we've seen with AI is that the human being in charge of making the final decision gets desensitized quickly. Uh, what's that word? Uh, lazy. Also <laughs> lazy. <laughs> I got to go to lunch. I'm just going to approve these last five. I mean, think about if you had to look at something and it was right the last 900 times, don't you think you'd get a little complacent? <laughs> it's like when you're playing Sim City and you, you accidentally, you know, you're taking the road out so you can put in the wider road and you accidentally blow up the industrial district. It's like... Oh, man, we didn't need to take away that factory at all. It would have fit through here just fine. You broke your concentration because you clicked a different spell. And unfortunately, here's another story where I have to ask, okay, you're protecting us from this, but who's protecting us from you? <laughs> the Guardian's headline is, U.S. is leading a global alliance to counter foreign government disinformation. The alternate headline is, U.S. is leading a global alliance to take control of literally anything that people can see and read to make sure that they don't see and read something that they don't want to be saw or read. Also including Sink. Canada and the U.K., which do not have great track records either. It is really, like, even if you're well-meaning with something like this, like, oh, the disinformation campaign is doing the thing. The thing that you always come back to is it's just better to educate people that things like disinformation exist. And maybe you shouldn't believe everything that you read. Not, we must control all screens. It is, uh, it's a little bit worrying when the argument turns to, hey, here's why this is not a good idea and why our ideas are better, to, you must never see this. <laughs> you must never witness it. You must never conceive it. And that's kind of what Florida and Texas did, <laughs> which... The Supreme Court has now said that they will look at it. Supreme Court questions Florida and Texas social media laws on First Amendment grounds. Some of the Supreme Court justices have already said, ah, these are private companies. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to, uh, for us because the First Amendment doesn't apply to private corporations. Uh, I kind of agree with that. First, How, well, well, go ahead. They point out that the First Amendment is for the government, right? Like the government must not restrict your speech. When anybody other than the government restricts your speech, that's their free speech. And it's like, if it's their thing, then they have the free speech and you don't. So I, I kind of agree with you as well. The, uh, the, the argument that never comes up, and we always, uh, like, we always try to state, but we really need normies saying what we say, which is, look at what... <laughs> that sounds so condescending. Yeah, that's not the meant. best way to put it. I don't... Oh, we never do. But okay, okay. Look, look at look at Twitter. The Twitter Twitter is a great example, especially like pre and post Musk Twitter, because Musk has his own agenda. You can't trust everything that, that Musk Musk says. And Musk genuinely just misunderstands some things, which is you know cool. I mean, brilliant individual, whatever. But pre, you have a private corporation basically functioning as a mouthpiece for government. And so in that scenario, it's like, well, I mean, if you have a government functioning as a mouthpiece for government, then maybe the First Amendment protection should apply. But if it is a private corporation that is shaping speech and they're upfront about it, then as a private corporation, eh, okay. 
But the thing about it is the government wasn't forcing anything, right? That's the terrifying part. <laughs> they were encouraging. And they were encouraging in a way that probably was forcing it, yeah. but not technically. So, yeah, it's I, what you have to come down to there is you can't trust any of these social media companies. You can't trust pre Musk Twitter. You can't trust post Musk Twitter. <laughs> and you certainly can't trust any of the others, which are still in pre Musk Twitter mode. It seems like we always come back to that you just have to be smarter. Not smarter. <laughs> just uh, aware that you might read something on the discriminating. internet. Discriminating. <laughs> You must discriminate against the information that is offered to you. <laughs> even even the even the most basic among us can learn to be more discriminating. I would agree with that. But they don't want to. Well, and that's a problem. They are being psychologically manipulated. That's important to remember. It does seem like culturally we're conditioning things to be like, don't question it. Remember the don't do your own research? Yeah. PR blitz? Yeah. Well, when you did do your own research, if you lacked critical reasoning facilities, that did go catastrophically wrong. But so did buying into the <laughs> official yeah, yeah. narrative. <sighs> and President Biden has made an announcement about a topic that I would bet you my life, I would let you torture me slowly over the rest of my days, he doesn't understand. <laughs> the White House press release headline is Future Software... Should be memory safe. I think he wrote this himself. <laughs> <laughs> Penned it over his desk. Gosh, can you imagine if we did have a U.S. president that was so passionate about computer science that they understood memory safety? <laughs> Could you imagine if we had a U.S. president that was memory safe? <laughs> <laughs> or just had some sort of expertise outside of politics? I also read this as like White House announces it's like the new nationwide standard is the 1.6 gallon per flush, flush toilet. It's like, okay, I mean, sounds good. So uh, C and C++, which is the underpinnings for a lot of our older software and new stuff too, not memory safe. You can go out of bounds memory there. And they're saying that we should focus on transitioning to newer languages, which cannot be manipulated in that way. Like Rust. <laughs> Shout out to all the Rust stations out there. Feeling very smug and superior, I'm sure. <clears throat> And Apple is back in court, but this time it's not another company they're suing. It is the government. Was it the uh, we're paywall? Do you remember which organization it was? I thought it was the Federal Trade Commission. Maybe, but it's because they were rejected. Apple sues to win trademarks for augmented reality software. They want to trademark names like Reality Composer. Okay. The Federal Trade Commission said no. That's too broad. Yeah. The idea of Reality, I mean, that's just two words that you put together that, no, 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 we can't do that. And Apple's argument is that's a nonsensical term. I love their argument, right? Like, no, this is just PR BS that we came up with. This means nothing. So you should let us trademark it. <laughs> We've got Reality Composer at home. <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of reality going on in the Apple building. No. Some pie in the sky. It really is impressive how like thinking. Apple's reality distortion field, or the remember the Steve Jobs reality distortion field, they've somehow parlayed that into a trillion dollar empire. Well, do you recall the dark times when 5G was every week a political topic, uh, an industry topic? Like we couldn't stop talking about 5G and arguing about it and coming up with theories about how it was going to kill us all. We'll get ready to do it all again. Although the U.S. government is trying to get more of a control over it before it starts this time. U.S. and allies endorse 6G principles amid tech race with China. Now, theoretically, 6G has a lot of encryption and controls built in that probably should have been in 4G and 5G. But the reality is when you dig into the standards, it's really, I'm skeptical. So here are the countries that are... Oh, look, the Five part. Eyes countries plus the Czech Republic and Finland and France and Japan and South Korea. Sweden, the UK. Just, kind of, just keep reading them. Kind of like just everybody but China right? yeah. and Russia. You can't sit with us. Iran will well, not be invited. You know, when you have something that's that has to be connected, so like with a, with a vehicle, when we joke, it's like, oh, your vehicles are always on the internet. Your fridge is always on the internet. Your toaster. Like those don't need to be on the internet. It's convenient. But like if you turn it off, your car should keep working. A cell phone has got to be connected to something. So it has to be connected. And so the danger of something lurking in your network hardware is very real. And already happening. I yeah. <laughs> See also those African countries? 
It's like, oh, you haven't paid your Belt and Road dues. Look at that. All your stuff stopped working. Literally some things that have happened. What's wrong with my phone? Oh, it's got Belt and Road in it. There's no getting it out. Moving on to some state stories. Nevada is um, they're deciding to further risk the security of their people in the name of the children. <laughs> Nevada is in court this morning uh, looking to get a temporary restraining order blocking Meta from using end-to-end encryption. And this should terrify you because you look at it and you say, wait a minute. You know, just like at podunk levels, law enforcement already has full access to a lot more stuff than they should. Yes, otherwise they wouldn't be like the podunk levels of law enforcement. Your local district attorney should care if Meta has end-to-end encryption. But they say that it's the child predators. The child predators will be empowered by this, which might be true, but you can't legislate based on that if you're in a free country. But they're going to try. I didn't see if there was an update on that. I don't think that's shaken out yet. And here's one that we've seen before, and I think the uh, this was proven pretty much, right? Yeah. Yes. I don't think there's really any argument that this didn't happen. It's just, are we going to do anything about it? Arizona Attorney General sues real page landlords, accuses them of conspiring illegally to raise rents. We've covered this in, in the past, but basically real page let you list stuff for rent, but you could also look at other stuff for rent. And landlords were saying, hey, wait a minute, the rent's going up a lot. I can raise my rent too. And it's led to a vicious cycle, at least according to the Arizona Attorney General. Rents are up 76%. Over the last ten years, in some areas, salaries are too, right? Yeah, yeah everyone's no. able to afford. It turns a place out no. to live. Forty percent in the worst case scenario. So you're you're like the, the least amount of rent that has gone up since 2006 is forty percent, which way outpaces insane. inflation. So if you are in Arizona, you might recognize some of these names. These are some of the bigger uh, landlords in the area, and they have all been confirmed using RealPage. So when that many people in the state are Colluding, that's a cartel. That's not a free market at all. <clears throat> but also, is it even designed to be a free market if you can only, there's only so many new building permits issued every year? There's but, only so many landlords? Yeah, I mean, there's only. You can only, afford to buy a new property and flip them? Yeah, that's, and, that's a math problem. And you've got a lot of people coming into that area. Mm-hmm. A lot of people unofficially coming into that area who need housing a lot a lot of reproduction happening too like even if there were no people coming in unofficially the rate of new house construction is far lower than rate of new people generation line goes up that makes the line go up artificially fast but (laughs) they have some strongly negative effects on society now last week we learned was it in california where they were like hey we need to get back to teaching algebra (laughs) <laughs> and the teachers were like, whoa, algebra? How am I supposed to learn that? And it's like, what, what? I can't do algebra anymore. I've learned how to do common core. Shouldn't you, you all, shouldn't we all have that ability, especially if we're in the teaching field? Well, in New York, they have a similar kind of rule that's a, still a head scratcher. New York State to require credentials for all comp sci teachers. Basically, you have to get a certificate, take a test, do a certificate. You can get a certificate without taking the test if you've already been teaching this since 2007 or something like that. The certificate lasts for 10 years. That's too long for computer science. (laughs) One year might be too long. Think about 10 years from now. Nothing about computer science is going to look the same. (laughs) 10 years ago, Java actually looked like a decent multi-platform programming language. But with AI? Yeah. I mean, it'll either be something that we can't even comprehend right now or rocks and sticks. (laughs) I wonder how much, it, did it say how much it costs to get that certificate? I'm sure the school would pay for it. Actually, I'm not sure of that. Yeah, I'm not sure of that either. <laughs> a lot of those continuing but, ed things for different professions aren't always paid for. Yeah, it depends probably, on what they are. But. Probably a bit of a racket. Yeah. yeah. It's not a perfect solution, but we, uh, well, I had some people in our high school who were in charge of some of the tech stuff, and they didn't know what they were doing. No. Well, that was true of the math program as well, though. Yeah. And here is what what we're talking about with uh, the Supreme Court stepping in. They're trying to do it, but it might be overturned. Florida lawmakers passed ban on social media for kids under 16 despite constitutional concerns. I I was reading this and the way that they described the language in the law, I was concerned for STEAM. 
this made it sound like if you were doing like finding a friend on Steam just to play games, that Steam might possibly be banned. Yeah, so that's important. You do have a profile on there. Yeah, huh? it's not. They don't block you from looking at posts on social media. It was just if you could communicate person to person or discover people like something like that, right? You can do all that on Steam. And uh, so you don't you don't get banned from Facebook, but Facebook would have to change how it operates so that you can't do certain things. <laughs> Give me that amazing CS:GO skin, or I'll beat you up. It's like ah. Uh... And down in Texas, I think this is in Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. In Texas, they have uh, power issues, probably Frequently. due, probably due to how they're managing their power more than. Uh, oh, we get a story on that later. A demand issue, but they've decided to blame someone else. Bitcoin miners win a legal bid to withhold their energy data. They say because no good can come of it, <laughs> and the Department of Energy is not going to get access to their energy data. I think it's still up in the air, though, right? They could appeal or something. It is kind of funny that the Department of Energy is not able to get copies of your power bills under the, that looks like a business record um, law, but getting somebody's emails from Microsoft or a cloud provider because that looks like a business record is apparently okay. That tells me that a lot of power is being used for things that people in power don't want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the old pattern. I think it's important to point it out anytime we can. Step one, cause the problem. <laughs> Step two, offer a solution for the problem. Step three, the solution was what you wanted all along. <laughs> the Reuters headline is AI, drones, and security cameras, San Francisco mayor's arsenal to fight crime. She might as well have come out on a podium and said, listen, anybody that happens to be homeless transiently or permanently in San Francisco, we're going to chip them so that we know where they are at all times. <laughs> in case they get lost, just drop them in a mailbox and <laughs> <laughs> it's a wildlife program where they're trying to keep tabs on you. Ear tags. Yeah. yeah. That's so, basically what she was saying. Ugh. She is, uh, I don't I wonder what the election cycle is. She's probably getting close to it. But she authored the whole, like, defund the police and, you know, let's make everything of flowers and candy out here. And it's turned San Francisco into a bit of a hellscape. And so now... Instead of trying to transition out of that with like helping those people, we are going to send in the stormtroopers with all of the technology that we can give them. It'd be wild if we, you know, end up tagging them and knowing that the crime has been committed, but then don't. It's like, no, we're not going to spend police on picking those people up or prosecuting. <laughs> oh, when you said tagging them, I thought you meant like literally like <laughs> yeah. guarding them. And, <laughs> but yeah, uh, they all have already stopped enforcing a lot yeah. out there because it's just simply not realistic. Yeah. This uh, the Reuters had another article that was kind of sobering. I think I, I think it, I went down a black hole <coughs> looking at that one, and they had a map of San Francisco and like all of the retailers that had closed in the last two years. It's crazy. And it was yeah, it was it's like if you live there, it seems like it'd be a cha- engagement challenge. Do you live there? Is it a bit of a challenge? Is it as much of a challenge as it seems like? I saw a story that one I think it was in San Francisco. It was in one of those you know cities that had defunded the police. They were doing literal. You walk in the door and an employee is basically holding your hand the entire time. Hmm. I don't see how that works as a business model. How much are you paying that person? Probably not enough. What if they legalize trank darts? It's like you start to get unruly, you just get trank darted, and then you wake up in the alley outside. That would be drugging someone against their will. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Canada is decidedly further along than we are with this dystopian hell. And they are not afraid of headlines like this, like the word compel. And who decides what harmful content is? Turns out the government. Canada to compel digital platforms to remove harmful content. <laughs> this uh, publication, Market Scanner, I guess, or wherever they're reprinting this from, they asked the government what they meant by harmful content. And the elaboration somehow made it worse. Because it was just nonsense. It's like whatever we wanted to be. <laughs> the Elwood well, no, Show. We'll see it. <laughs> yeah. So they will, uh, it's kind of like what India is doing where they expect you to do it yourself. But then if they send you an explicit, take this down now, you have an amount of time, a short amount of time. You have to take it down or there's severe punishments. No appeals process, at least before you take it down. And uh, Apple has lost and they have lost in a tantrumy, petulant way. Every single 
inch that they've given has been given. They've left traps <laughs> and all sorts of horrible things and piles of feces. And the EU is getting tired of it. The first headline is Apple's decision to drop iPhone web apps comes under scrutiny in the EU. Yeah, this is good. This is really good. Apple will probably walk back how, how badly they've crippled home screen web applications. But it was never good. Like they had already deliberately degraded things like WebGL performance. Like there is, it is, in my mind, it is indefensible to be able to embed WebGL in a Safari control inside an application and get a completely different performance profile than WebGL performance just inside Safari, whether that's a web app or anything else. That's encouraging people to put stuff in the app store so that Apple can make money. That's really crappy behavior. Apple argues, hey, we had this special way of doing this where we had like data that was going in between and we were able to control that. But because you're taking away our ability to wall the garden, we can't do that anymore. So we must do this to protect our users. That, that argument sounds amazing until you realize that they have been completely powerless to protect against Pegasus spyware for the better part of a decade. We got to protect the users, except for if you use Pegasus. Or are they trying not to? <laughs> We're trying not that hard. Or are they being compensated for not doing that? Now, with all of these stories about you know the EU and the FTC and all that stuff, you could imagine that these big tech companies and governments have a very contentious relationship. Like they're always just angrily texting one another. But actually, it's quite uh, congenial when the lobbyists show up, which is every day. But one set of lobbyists will not be showing up anymore. European Parliament bans Amazon from its premises. So it turns out the lobbyists could just badge right into the European Parliament. And since Amazon has refused to show up and their labor practices and a few other reasons cited, all of those lobbyists' badges no longer work after today. Oh, that's delicious. <laughs> that's, I, I would love to be the fly on the wall who watched that happen. Oh. So, uh, yeah, they will be for they've had all these hearings. It was like, hey, Amazon, you got to come and explain what this horrible things you're doing. And Amazon just ghosts them. They're just like, no, we're not coming. Remember, then great. You don't get a key card. Remember when we did the story about how Amazon said that they weren't a large retailer in Europe? Like we don't meet the definition of a large retailer. And it's like, mm. why would a small retailer have that many lobbyists? <laughs> And the EU is also trying to get a handle on the patent situation. As we all know, patent trolling is a huge issue in the tech world. And how do you fix it? I don't know that they have the best idea, but they're trying. EU lawmakers draft uh, backdraft rules on patents and for connected cars and telecom equipment. I'm sure the 6G stuff is being heavily controlled there. Plus, there might be some situations here where China owns some stuff and it's like, well... Let's just ignore that. The connected cars here in this context is also a little different than the connected cars context that I was complaining about. This is more near field communication, like cars on the highway can communicate with one another. So cars that are two or three miles ahead of other cars can radio the cars behind them and say, things are getting a little more congested. Prepare now. Now, let's take a trip back in time. No, I don't want to. <laughs> and, and remember the world when every week, there was this just overwhelming PR campaign. AI is not going to cost jobs. <laughs> it's going to enhance jobs. It's going to make us all happier, happier but it's not going to destroy jobs. Don't worry about it. We're going to go to a three-day work week. It's going to be amazing. And now, a few short years later, the exact opposite. <laughs> they are acting like the exact opposite is good. The gadget headline is, UK government wants to use AI to cut civil service jobs. And the quotes are, we're looking around, we're doing the budget numbers, and we just don't have the money to pay all these people. We're hoping that AI can fill in the gaps, because these people are losing their jobs regardless. He tried to temper it a little bit by saying, well, during the past couple of years, the, the bad time, we overhired. And now <laughs> we have to get rid of those people. Yeah, there's, there's already apologists in the comments that are saying, well, this is not technically AI taking jobs. This is... Jobs that never should have been there to begin with. And we're shoring up the remaining jobs with AI. It's just like... I can't wait to see like the next level of like, well, all these people who were hired before those other people, they were just useless. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. And why would you need to add AI to that equation if those people really aren't useful? Yeah. A lot of questions. Some other questions that Mr. Sunak has been getting is about this ULEZ, the ultra-low emission zone. 
And that is if you drive the wrong kind of car into London, you get fined for it. But they have a situation where you can just sign up for an app and it'll conveniently let you pay your fine through the app. How nice, right? Except it's not so much pay the fine as it is just... The, the Guardian's headline is uh, TFL's ULAS auto pay has turned into be an auto fine. So this is somebody that wrote in and said, my license plate looks kind of similar to somebody else's. I haven't even been there. They find me, they got the money, and it has been weeks and hours of Kafka-esque phone calls to try to get my money back. And it took 700 pounds and I still don't have my money. But they never, I bet it's all AI, like chat lines and stuff too. They never clicked pay this fine in their app. Just that once you link the bank account up to the app or whatever the payment is, Yoink. they just take it. And you don't get it back until you appeal, but the appeals process sounds like, you know, the, the Google nightmare. Yeah. Where you're never going to speak to a human. And even then, it's just going to be a bureaucrat. So I'm not a real human. And when they make that mistake in that direction, well, it's up to you to deal with it. But when they make the mistake in the other direction, you better give it back. <laughs> Zurich paid city employees double their monthly salaries. Now it wants that $200 million back. I was reading a story. We have There's stories like this of this kind of thing happening here in America. When it happens here in America, the employers just take the money. Like they just, it's like, oops. And then they call the bank and the bank rolls it back. Like uh, Small businesses can't do it, but if you have a large business, uh, they just do it. It's weird how that works, isn't it? Yeah. Man? They just, they know they won't get in trouble for it because they're too big. And over in India, they are uh, rapidly picking up China scraps and it's causing growth, but it's also causing some headaches because they're, they're learning the kinds of problems you have with globalism. India's plan to let 1998 digital trade deal expire may worsen the chip shortage. This is because India is saying, oh, maybe we can uh, get some taxes on video games and a whole bunch of stuff. I bet, Tim, I bet Tim Cook picks up the phone and it's like, listen, what are you what are you doing? We just moved a bunch of stuff here to India. Like, what are you, what are you doing? Stop this. Yeah, so they're focusing on movies and games and, and digital media, but the, this will also affect the chip import-export. And every, like Foxconn is like, wait a minute, guys. We just moved a bunch of factories over there. And China's stock market, not doing well. What do you do in the modern times when your stock market collapses? Obviously, you just ban people from trading. <laughs> China securities regulator to tighten scrutiny of derivatives and high-frequency trading. I was expecting that from this headline, but I read this, and this just seems like we need this here. Oh, yeah. High-frequency trading should not <laughs> exist. Derivatives, there's a good argument that maybe they shouldn't exist either. I mean, there's a real reason to use them in terms of, like, protecting yourself, but it's just... it's it's. More games in the casino, I think, at this point. Yeah, it was. It, it's hard to argue with this in principle in terms of it being a good thing or, or a, I mean, a, a bad thing for, like, I don't, I don't know. It was, it, was un, it was like, we need this here. What do you mean we can do this here? This seems terrible. This seems like just exploiting people. Now, this story, I would uh, argue that you should, here's a, a thought experiment, right? Compare the actions and the behavior of this entity with every major tech company that suffers bad PR. <laughs> it's exactly the same. Lockbit ransomware gang resurfaces with new leak site. Mm, they're hunting you down. So, I don't, it's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for them. They claim that everything is fine. Don't worry about it. They're still in business. It's going to be okay. Keep investing. Oh, they're not publicly <laughs> traded. But uh, they are now also trying to recruit from some other ransomware games. Whereas before... Lockbit was like the job that you wanted. Like, man, I wish I could steal with you guys. You guys are so good at it. But the website is back up. So maybe it wasn't as successful as we thought. And here, Fast Company just has a big round, and I mean a long, long article about all the various little firms that are cranking out spyware and making our governments enabled Spy on us. The headline is the shady cyber attack firms helping governments hack citizens' phones. So this talks more specifically about Pegasus, but it's not just Pegasus. And this is a ubiquitous problem across both the Apple and Android ecosystems. How many do we know of? There's that, a lot. That are at least big enough to be in this article? There's a lot. Mm, 
keep scrolling. Yeah, lots of them. Yeah, and those are just the big ones that we know about. Again, I ask you, like, we got to protect the users in the walled garden. No, there is zero protection for organized criminals. I promise you. Well, this criminal was not protected from anything. He did something that was kind of smart, but also he had to know, right? Mm. How do you expect to get away with this? Oklahoma man hacked government site to buy cars at auction for a dollar. <laughs> actually, it, he did it like eight or nine times. They actually only charged him with a crime for three of them. And he only pled guilty to one of them. He may get, I mean, comparatively here, this may just be a slap on the wrist. The price is right moment. Yeah. So $1. he would bid the normal price. These were almost always cars. And then when it came time to pay, he figured out, I guess, that the price data was part of the data that was passed with his payment. He just manipulated it to a dollar. <laughs> and it worked. Ugh, you got to feel bad if you're the developer on that. Yeah. And you get that email. Ooh. Yeah, that's a tough one. And uh, Canada has just recently banned the Flipper Zero for this very reason. The Flipper is out there and it's making things real easy. Gone in 20 seconds, how smart keys have fueled a new wave of car crime. So this is an article that is written to help everyday people understand the type of crime that is occurring here. This is a good article you could share with people that have a car that has a wireless key fob. You know, putting it in a bowl by the door, not a good idea. Might have to get your pouch. Yeah, got to get an RFID pouch. Uh, the idea here is that it's... Uh it extends the range so it picks up your key fob repeats it to be next to the car and then just get in and drive away it really is that simple but also this article also talks a little bit about how like car manufacturers are kind of taking the position oh that's not our problem when really it absolutely is it's the old kia hyundai argument yeah. right like we cut every corner that we could and oh no oh no technology's caught up with us yeah Cars last for 15 or 20 years. You know what would fix that? If we could just remotely disable any vehicle anywhere on the planet at a moment's notice over the internet. That would fix that. And it's like, mm, that's not the takeaway <laughs> that I want. From mm. But it's the one that you'll get. Yeah. And when it comes again to spying, there is a lot of it out there. You might not be aware of it. Hopefully you're a little bit more aware of it if you watch this show. But some people are allowed to do it. Other people are not. Class action suit wants a company scanning and selling Californians' license plate data to pay up. That seems reasonable. I bet you this gets kicked out of court, though. Because if they set up a camera in a public area or they get a permit to install a camera in a public area, there's probably very little an individual can do about this. But a lot of that is mobile. Uh, now, if you're not familiar, they do. Cop cars have these. Uh, they pay taxi services to install these often. Sometimes tow trucks, for example, will have these. So anytime these entities are driving through parking lots or whatever, if you're parked on the side of the road, they're picking up license plate data and selling it. And that's not the only thing. This that's, is like the most horrific uh, section or story of this section. Yeah, this is not the only thing that's picking up your data and selling it. It's all of the, anything that's a computer out there, basically, is starting to be transformed into a privacy invader. How do you avoid it? Vending machine error reveals secret face image database of college students. So. <laughs> <laughs> we see you're ordering the green M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> so it runs Windows. How terrifying is that? And it could not load the facial recognition program. So you got this error. And some of the students were like, wait a minute. <laughs> what's the name of that executable file? And they, uh, they pulled the campus, pulled all the machines uh, or whoever pulled all the machines because it was kind of turning into a PR nightmare. And it was, in fact, facial recognition running in the M&M's machine. Why? <laughs> they got Why analytics <laughs> to figure out what M&M's sell best at this particular spot on campus. They pretty much said, like, uh, we're trying to figure out how best to serve our customers. Well, I got news for you. Not spying on me. <laughs> you know the, a great way to tell what M&M's are selling? Look at what M&M's you have to restock more often. <laughs> yeah, but they want to know, like, who's buying what. Mm. Yeah, maybe the Asian kids like a certain size of M&M's. Any minute now, you're going to be able to talk to a personal assistant like Siri or Alexa. And they're just going to say creepy things. It's like, oh, this is worse than that time that you bought and returned a 1998 Ford Bronco. And it's like, wait, wait, how, how did you know I that? I already have that feature in my head where I like try to go to sleep and I remember terrible things that have happened. I don't want that being reminded to me by technology. 
And so Alexa's just like, you should order more of this. Oh, you're right, Alexa. I should get some more engine anti knock so that we can avoid it. It's like, wait a minute. How did you know the debacle with the Bronco? That makes no sense. Buying things will fix me emotionally. What you need, Krista, is a 2024 Bronco. Oh. Let me show you some websites. <laughs> now, one way in this horrible AI future, one way that we might be able to keep some of our privacy and escape the hell is to pretend ourselves to be robots. <laughs> a former Gizmodo writer changed his name to Slackbot and stayed undetected for months. So basically, uh, he was let go because a lot of people are being let go. And he just changed his name after he noticed that his account wasn't immediately <laughs> disabled. And, and he so also changed his icon. Yeah. So it's Slack, the regular Slackbot, but he's got angry eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Does the regular one have the frown? No, he like modified it so it looks angry, but no one noticed, even though he was he was still commenting too. Like he would put like, here's some Slack bot facts and no one ever said anything. So this was twenty twenty two. He's been there since then. That's amazing. And just been collecting information. Just like every other real AI. And uh security is something that you need to think about in not just in terms of like who's spying on you online, but in the room. Basic security. <laughs> U.S. man accused of making $1.8 million from listening in on wife's remote work calls. I, I hope he gets away with this. Well, he's not going to. <laughs> and His wife is also divorcing him. Aww. And she's the one who turned him in. That's sad. She worked for what, BP? It was a big oil company, I think. <sighs> and she was so loyal to these monsters that he was like, hey, sweetie. I got to make a little confession here. She's like, <laughs> you did what? And she immediately went to her overlords and they immediately went after him and then they were divorced. They fired her too. Which, that's what you get, right? Uh -huh. For sucking up to the monster. Made uh, quite a bit of money and he claims, and of course, you know, he's trying to spin this as best he could. He was like, he said he presented it to her with, hey, sweetie, you don't have to go to those online meetings anymore. <laughs> but she still went with the company. I guess she thought that they would catch on to it eventually. Yeah, I mean, they probably, I mean, like, it's tough because you probably will be destroyed, but. But the SEC would have to catch it and then they'd have to prove it. Well, if it was an office scenario and the janitor, like the building that they were renting had a janitor come through and the janitor happened to overhear something and the, the door was open, that's fine. That's actually gone through the court system before. And, you know, the janitor that made millions upon millions of dollars is like, well, it's unfortunate that they, that they heard that, but. So fine. The article pointed out that they're probably just going to use this as ammunition to go after work from home. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, look what could happen if you have people working from home together. <laughs> what if they orchestrated all this? They're like, listen, Susie, be really loud on the conference call. Thought, also, you were going to require you to divorce your husband. Did, didn't we cover a call where um, the SEC got some some J.P. Morgan people? They, the SEC was very upset. J.P. Morgan was using like uh, Snapchat or something. Uh, undeclared chats uh, yes yeah and so like whoever run, ran those things could do insider trading that way and the gold fix mm. they were manipulating the gold fix yeah some of those people got in a little bit of trouble but mostly yeah they the sec was like now don't do that again <laughs> yeah i mean 1.8 million dollars is nothing those people made tens of millions of dollars i bet those people are still working in finance yeah unlike this poor lady she trusted the wrong one. She should have been like, all right, you know what? We'll go to Barbados. We'll get a little beach shack. We'll live out have the rest of our time. lives. Have a great time, yeah. yeah. Start a YouTube channel. <laughs> simple living. How did you get the money to start your simple living homestead? And it's like, well, you'll never believe. One simple trick. <laughs> BP hates it. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody went to work as a, at a janitor at some of those places just to you know, get the trash and do the stuff to try to do that. They've probably, they've probably done that successfully and are in Barbados right now, just living it just out. Just chilling. You gotta yeah. be smart about it. Yeah. He should have divorced her and never told her. Yeah. Love. <laughs> love has sent that man to prison. And it's not love that's happening here though, but rather horrible, horrible things because the supply chain is insecure. GitHub besieged by millions of malicious repositories in an ongoing attack. Uh, it's a little misleading to say this is an ongoing attack. Basically, a lot of organizations whitelist and trust GitHub, and you can upload malicious code to GitHub, and then you can 
be inside somebody's organization and download malware from in from you know inside their organization from GitHub that you've uploaded to GitHub. And so you can kind of weaponize GitHub and use it to attack inside infrastructure because a lot of companies trust GitHub website. This is nothing new. We've talked about this before. But the scale of it. The scale is increasing, yes. And here's another thing that's nothing new. This has been going on since Meta existed, <laughs> even before Meta when it was just Facebook. The Ars Technica headline is Meta will start collecting anonymized data about Quest headset. The surprising thing for me is they're, they're not already collecting a lot of anonymized data about Quest headset. Users. They were collecting some data, <laughs> but they've decided to collect <clears throat> more data, and at least that is a little bit more disturbing. <laughs> I need more data. Feed so, me. yeah, like everything that you say while you're questing <laughs> everything that you Questing. say in the room with your quest <laughs> don't trade you know, you know don't offer insider trade info when your quest is in the room drink verification can <laughs> how about information about your physical environment and its dimensions so basically you're running a camera yeah. in my room and you're recording that in some manner. Every now and then it just pops up and it's like, damn, bitch, you live like this? That, that's <laughs> demographic info. Some of those companies actually, there are, there's algorithms that like if you, like when you buy furniture, I don't know if it was Wayfair. I don't know. I don't want to name any retailer in case somebody. There well, was, you you kind of already have. There was some retailer that in their database, they kept track of how much furniture you buy. So like if you go and you buy enough furniture for like, you know, a thousand square foot room and you don't have any other information disclosed, they're using that to estimate, you know, how much disposable income you have and how much you're doing and it's like what class of stuff that you do. Even just buying plumbing fixtures, like, oh, they bought a nice sink. They probably have a lot of money. Also, I don't know if we've ever heard this proven, but Roomba. Yeah. Roomba could basically tell people a lot about you based on how much room it was roomba -ing. I'm picking up a lot of hair. This person has long hair. <laughs> or a pet. Or a pet, yeah. Or both. And we often talk about, you know, data brokers and the various ways that your data can be misused and is being misused by the powers that be outside of any kind of laws or regulations. It doesn't matter. They just buy it and they use it for stuff like this. <laughs> The Wired headline is How the Pentagon Learned to Use Targeted Ads to Find Its Targets. This is a good article for you to share with your friends or anybody that's, like, okay, so what does it matter? Because they were able to just say, hey, we want to sell ads to people that are geofenced inside mm, the NSA headquarters. Actually, it was the Kremlin in this case. Okay. So if you're in and around the Kremlin, maybe you see this ad, maybe we identify your phone, maybe we look at how you move, maybe we can set up a honey trap for you. Or maybe you do that every single day on a rigid schedule. So they were actually able to single out Putin's security detail. Neat. Terrifying. Neat, yes. Yeah. Also now, terrifying. Now think about the very first story that we did where Biden was saying, it's like, mm, maybe you shouldn't sell the data to foreign governments. Why would the, go the foreign governments need the data? <laughs> but also, we're the one doing this. Yeah. And you're crazy if you think that we're not doing that, too. I don't know. Everyone. Julian Assange's lawyer. <laughs> it is dark times, isn't it? But here's a little bit of brightness because uh, a, a tiny, tiny ray of sunlight <laughs> in amongst all this horrible compost. <laughs> Court orders the makers of the Pegasus spyware to hand over code to WhatsApp. Hey, compost actually serves a function and like helps you grow new things. There's, you don't want to eat it. There's two alarming things about this court case. One is Meta, of all companies, was actually concerned enough to try to figure out what vulnerability was in their application that allowed them to access secret stuff because they couldn't figure it out. Two, Apple has a lot more to lose in this battle than Meta, and Apple seems not to care. Or are they paid not to care? <laughs> <laughs> and here's another one that Apple isn't really ringing the alarm bells about, but you know they have to be aware of it, right? FBI is using push notifications to catch predators. Because you send a push notification, you get a ping, and you know where they are. <laughs> and you know that they are using specific apps. How it's amazing how much work they're doing not to do regular police work. 
this was kind of given away in the the Nevada case too. Remember that we just covered the thing about they want end to end encryption. It's not just the FBI. It's also like your local sheriff. Like your local sheriff would like to know if you're at the bingo hall. Bing. Oh yes, you are. <laughs> Tag loser on there. <laughs> I don't even need to go to the bingo hall to gamble because I'm always gambling with my security. That's our last story for the week. No, We're not, not for the not week. For the day. day. <laughs> for the day. We, we have got, more stories. We have a lot of business stories. It's, like, it's pretty story heavy this week, really. Yeah, this one was the worst one, though. A lot of government stuff this week. There was. All right. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Start at level one, text to come. Bye.